So we've got the Dynamite Show coming up tomorrow. And uh, I got to talk about this. I got to talk about this one. You know what? When I adjust in the chair, I got to talk about something. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is what we have for the, the show thus far. We have John Moxley and Claudio versus Dax and Cash. We have got Joe, Swerve, and Brian Cage versus Hangman Page, Hook, and Rob Van Dam. Which, by the way, they've got um, Hangman Page on the Babyface team. And they have got uh, Swerve on the heel team. And I know that when this was announced and this was brought up, people are like, don't you know what a Parejas in Crabless match is? <laughs> that's, um, that's not what it's billed as. It's just billed as a six man. So if you want to make up your own storyline, you're welcome to. But they did not bill it as that, okay? They just, that's where everybody was put on these teams. And then we've got uh, Tony Storm in action. And we've got Deanna Parazzo in action. Okay. Why do I bring that up? I don't Why know. do I bring this up? Okay. Well, I bring it up because the show's coming up. Oh. But this is this is the point that I want to make. Okay. This show is taking place from the Box Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Okay. Box Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Let's check WrestleTix. Because I want to make sure I don't screw this up because people get mad. Oh, man. Imagine if that okay. Virgin Fornicator match was happening in the box. All right. So, the box center in Tulsa, Oklahoma, they are at 2,700 tickets. Okay? 2,700 tickets. This is the first time that they have ever run the box center in Tulsa, Oklahoma. They have sold 2,700 tickets. Now, yes, this is better than when they were selling 1,800 tickets or 2,200 tickets or whatever, 2,700 tickets. But 2,700 tickets for the first show in Tulsa, Oklahoma, this is not lighting the world on fire, okay? Now, I have a point to all of this because I know people are like, they're getting ready to start furiously typing. CMLL and BCC at Arena Mexico. You know that match coming up? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Completely sold out. All right? It's awesome. New Japan, the Moxley-Naito championship match, which is coming up. They are opening up more seats now. Uh, that show is uh, now opened up to 6,800. I think they originally, what they opened it up for originally, like three or four? Something like that. And, uh, and all of the tickets have been selling, and so they keep opening up more and more seats. We're now at almost 7,000. For that show, and it's still quite a ways away. AW Revolution has the Sting and Darby championship match against the Young Bucks, the final match of Sting, okay? That's at uh, over 13,000, I believe, okay? So we've got BCC, CMLL, Arena Mexico sold out. We've got New Japan, Moxley, Naito for the title, 6,800. They're adding tickets. We have got Revolution, Sting and Darby versus the Bucks, 13,000. And we've got Dynamite in Tulsa at 2,700. Okay? I think it is so patently obvious what's going on here. And the other thing that I should mention, by the way, is that um, uh, WWE did a house show this weekend, which Dave noted. Uh, did like 7,000 fans or something. They, they did well in both Oakland and Fresno on Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. Like 7,000 fans for a house show, okay? Not a Raw, not a SmackDown. A house show. Not even a house show with CM Punk wrestling Dominic Mysterio or whatever. It's a random house show, okay? So, here's the point, I think. I've been wrong before. I think we can all agree, except for Lenny, that WWE is hot right now, correct? I They're hot. I think so, yes. Okay. I think we can all agree, I'll, I'll say this so people don't get mad, AW is cooled off. I they're won't cold, say Brian. they're cold. I will. I'll say they, hey, the pay-per-view's got 13,000. The pay-per-view's well, got 13,000, so I can't say they're cold. That's they, true. But they have cooled that's off, true. okay? Yeah. They have cooled well, off, all right? They don't now, draw well. How about that? Well, here's the thing. The pay-per-view is drawing well. 
Okay. What do the pay-per-view, CMLL at Arena Mexico, and the New Japan show with Moxley and Naito all have in common? That is not John Moxley. What do they all have in common? Big fight feel? Big fight, big, big shows? I mean, what? I they announced the matches a long Nina time was, ago. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. We knew the Moxley Naito match, what, a month and a half, two months before the show? We knew Sting and Darby and Sting's final match months before the show. Yeah, but that uh, Sting's final match was going to carry that ball. Doesn't matter. The point is, we knew the match months before the show. Yeah. The Arena Mexico, the CMLL BCC, we know that match month before the show. Okay? Well, here we are the day before Dynamite in Tulsa, and we know two matches. We know You're two right. matches. You're right. You're and right. and we know we know two people will be in action. That's it. We don't even know who Tony Storm's going to wrestle. We don't know who Deanna's going to wrestle. The the fact of the matter is, and here's why I brought up WWE, okay? When you are hot, you advertise a Raw show coming to town, you advertise a SmackDown show coming to town TV, and they sell out, okay? When you are particularly hot, you do a house show and you do seven, 8,000 fans, okay? Great. Just announce you're coming to town, you're going to sell tickets, okay? When you have cooled off, Dynamite Rampage coming to town is not enough, okay? Announcing a big match a week in advance is not enough, okay? You need to have big matches with big stars, big names, all of this announced far in advance to get people to go to the show if they're in town, travel to the show if they're nearby, okay? Obviously, with the revolution, you got to fly in. But the, the reason I also bring up New Japan is that New Japan Battle in the Valley show, they did not announce a card far in advance. They announced a card a week in advance. And as soon as they announced that card, because New Japan is cooled off, they're not hot like WWE. When they announced the crowd and they told you you're actually going to see Okada versus Tanahashi, seven days before the show, they started moving tickets. A lot of tickets. Because people knew the matches, okay? So Dynamite needs a full card a week in advance. A full card, okay? They've done the deal where, okay, well, you know, we're going to give you one big match two weeks from now. That's cool. We need more, okay? I think that I look at all these numbers. I look at what's selling, what's not selling. And the answer is what's selling is either what's hot or what they've told people about over a month in advance. What is not selling tickets is Dynamite Rampage, Collision, we're coming to town, and a week before the show, we're going to give you some matches, and then Tony's going to tweet out some matches two days before. That's not working. It's just not. And I don't want people arguing about it, because we've got plenty of evidence here. It's not working. <laughs> They're still going to try to argue with you anyway, boss, but yeah, well, I I'm not agree. listening. You're, <laughs> you're right. Um, I will also say, though, if you have feuds that are hot, if you have things that are hot, you can get away with advertising two matches. If there's other things, if people know that other people are going to be there and there's hot stuff going on. So, like, if the show, yeah, look, if the show was hotter, it would be better. My thing with this is all of those buildings that you named, including Wintrust, are all scaled properly to the events that they're running. WWE can run out, run anything and sell it out right now or come close to it in, in some cases, you know, especially when it comes to their PLEs. New Japan won, running Wind Trust, that's 10,000 people. The Box Center is another example of why are you running this building in Tulsa when there are other buildings in and around there that are smaller than 20,000? Because unless they are planning, and they're not, because it's not on a college campus. I mean, this is where, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, to me, why are you running this building? Unless it's an incredibly amazing sweetheart deal, this is another example of you're putting 4,000 people in a 20,000 seat building. It's insane. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. You knew it happened. What happened? You knew there would be somebody. Uh oh. Yes, Booble. Oh my no. My dear Him? Booble. <laughs> my dear Booble. How are they supposed to announce matches when the storylines might not have happened on television yet? Now, 
I could huh? go nutty here, but I'm not gonna. Let me let me just help because maybe Booble really doesn't get it. Maybe some of you don't as well. Okay. Oh, what happened to pro wrestling? I didn't say. Well, first off, let me just say this. I love AEW. I want them to succeed. We all know. I that. would I I would like them to do uh, you know eight thousand people at a house show. I'd like them to do 13,000 people at all their television tapings, okay? And you know what's not going to help is saying that everything is all right as, as they do 2,700 in Tulsa, okay? That's not what's going to help. What is going to help is an idea. And you don't seem to understand, my friend Booble. I didn't say to announce a full card two months in advance, okay? Why don't we just go to the other extreme, all right? We got tomorrow's show. All right. <laughs> is, is Brian Danielson on the show tomorrow? Is Brian Danielson on the show tomorrow? I don't. I don't Are the know. Young Bucks on the show tomorrow? I is Sting on the so, show tomorrow? I, I, not is Darby no. Allen on the show tomorrow? I, 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 no. I, is uh, is uh, Soraya on the show tomorrow? Uh, we know Britt Thunder Baker's Rosa, on the show no. tomorrow. No I mean, the, the 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 point is, we don't know, bro. I have two matches here. Okay, I have two matches, and I have two people in action. I don't know anything else, brother. I don't know who's going to be there. I don't know who's not going to be there. Okay? Yeah. If you can give me a full card a week in advance, which is not two months, but a week in advance. Bro, hey, you know what? Let's look at the uh, the Raw show for next week. Raw show for next week. I got uh, Kofi Kingston and Xavier versus Ludwig Kaiser and Giovanni Vinci. Sami Zayn versus Shin. I know two matches already for Raw next week. And, and that's they're coming hot. after a pay-per-view. Okay? Exactly. It's coming after a pay-per-view. Last week, the Raw lineup, we had like five matches announced for the next week's show. Okay? And that's a hot promotion. All right? This is a not-as-hot promotion. Okay? I got two matches, and I got no names. I have no names. I don't know who's going to be on the show. So, at the very least, how about you say, hey, you know what? We have revolution coming up, right? You're yeah. telling me this Tony Khan hasn't booked out the go home show for okay, Revolution? Okay, time out. Stop right there. Stop right there. Because this is one of those things that I knew you were going to bring it up because I was going to bring it up. Everybody always talks about Tony Khan and his long term ideas that he has, and he then thinks will happen, but he wants to stick to that long term idea. You always bring that up. But there is a difference between having those long term ideas and sticking to that mindset. While maybe not being a really great day-to-day -day booker and week-to-week -week booker, which he doesn't seem to be because a lot of it is big matches and callbacks from the past in matches that uh, there's a lot of one of Brian, he wouldn't have to advertise so much if people had a real idea of what feuds were going on and all of that sort of stuff and yeah but if you know those do a good job of that but and we here's talk my about point his long-term plan yeah if he knows what's going on at the pay-per-view then he should be able to list the names that are no going kidding. to be on the show exactly i don't care about the matches but, but you he, should but... know hey listen wwe you don't think if wwe is going to run a show in seattle in two months i'm gonna have a list of people that are gonna be on the show i am yes. okay they're gonna give me a list of people who are going to be on that show that's not that hard to do are they gonna have the full card at that point for that show no they're not but a week in advance, you should have most of the card. You don't think Tony had the card for this week's Dynamite a week ago? Well, that's the thing. I'll is, bet you he you know, did. But that's the thing is, Brian, and I bet you he probably did, but did it ever, did he ever get it off the sheet and out of the book to someone? To And that's the problem, is there is some sort of either either he's not doing that, or there's a problem in a breakdown in how the communication is to get that to people. You know, one of the things that they did, I, I don't know, I, that, it just it, it drives me nuts how he goes about some of his, his matches. And this doesn't have anything really to do with it, but maybe a little bit in how he announces matches. A couple of weeks ago, and I can't remember what the match was at the end of, it may have been the House of Black and FTR at the end of Collision. They start throwing a bunch of matches up at the bottom of the screen about as the match is getting towards the end. And then they start to, for next week, and that's good in that, wow, okay, we're, we got a, like a whole card for next week already and things that are coming up for the rest of the week on Rampage, on Dynamite, cool. And then when the last 30 seconds of the show, as they're fading out, 
when there shouldn't be any talk and we should be seeing like letting everything sink in what happened in the ring they bring those graphics back up again and the announcers are now talking over what you should be seeing with the baby face in peril in the ring and laid out and 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 grasping and and breathe you know desperating for air being desperate for air and the heels you know sneaking their way up the ramp and being and, but instead the announcers are just like there is an issue there's a big issue again with how they go about a lot of how they do things and it doesn't have to be like wwe but it needs to be made a lot more clear and it needs to somehow again get off of his booking sheet and get out of his notebook and to the people that need to promote it because this is ridiculous you're exactly right why do we not have at least a handful of names if not a handful of matches for this week's show it's crazy Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.